My name is Brad Andrews. I'm president here at Southwestern College, and it's my great joy and privilege to be with you tonight as we recognize and honor three incredible mound builders who've dedicated their lives and their careers to discovery in all kinds of ways. Their work has advanced research and improved the quality of life enjoyed by many. Their work has propelled the institutions and organizations where they have served. Their work has been dedicated to learning more and helping more and bettering lives. Focused on research and teaching and patient-centered care and helping others, they are each exemplary builders. Each came through Southwestern and found an academic env environment and mentors, faculty, staff, community members uh, to support them. And this is where perhaps they established a foundation, uh, but it is amazing to follow their stories and see all that they have built uh, in their lives so far and careers uh, um, from that foundation. So this evening we honor their hard work and their commitment. Uh, we honor uh, uh, something that is special about each of them and their lives and their work. Our three inductees, Dr. Mayorga May, Dr. Renner, and Dr. Conaway, join a natural, uh, natural Science Hall of Fame that includes uh, many amazing and brilliant and accomplished members. I am thankful to each of you for the example that you've set uh, for the students here with us, uh, for all of us as a faculty and staff, uh, I'm thankful for all that you have done, and I am thankful that you are builders. I hope that you feel pride in your college because we certainly feel a great deal of pride in you. So it is indeed a joy to be here with all of you this evening and to celebrate the achievements of our selected natural sciences alumni. As you are all well aware, the natural sciences and mathematics division of Southwestern College has a long history of academic excellence and achievement. And it is amazing to realize and acknowledge the quality and quantity of our graduates that have made lasting impacts on and have achieved great heights in their chosen fields. The Hall of Fame was established in 2001 to honor the achievements of our science graduates. For that first Hall of Fame, 10 outstanding science graduates were inducted. Every year since then, a few more deserving alumni are inducted in recognition of their substantial contributions to the field of science and their continuing dedication to Southwestern College and its goals. As of now, the Hall of Fame consists of more than 50 members from a wide array of scientific fields, including medicine, statistics, meteorology, environmental toxicology, computer science, nuclear physics, industrial chemistry, and ecology. Nominations for the Science Hall of Fame are solicited each year from faculty, alumni, and, and friends of the college. Once a year, a committee that includes a representative from Institutional Advancement and Alumni Relations, that's Charles McKenzie right now, um, the division chair, and a few other science faculty uh, meet to carefully examine the nominees and choose the honorees for the year. This evening, we will add three more individuals to this illustrious group. Dr. C. Clifford Conaway, Dr. Kenneth Renner, and Dr. Angela Mayorga May. The beautiful uh, glass creations on the table here to my left are for each of the inductees. These are handcrafted pieces of art, um, and they're given annually to the Natural Sciences Hall of Fame inductees. They are created by Mr. Scott Hartley, who graduated from Southwestern in 97. He, is, he was a science major who went on to combine his artistic talents and his knowledge of science um, to become a master glass blower. He is a member of a Hall of Fame, but it's the Fine Arts Hall of Fame rather than the Natural Sciences Hall of Fame. So our first inductee tonight um, is C. Clifford Conaway, class of 1960. Clifford was a toxicologist, research scientist, and college professor whose distinguished career continued until a year before his death at age 78 in 2017. Conaway spent seven years as a project toxicologist for Texaco before moving to the American Health Foundation, um, also known as the Institute for Cancer Prevention, in 1986. 
For 17 years, he did cancer research focusing on basic research on mechanisms of carcinogenesis and dietary approaches to cancer chemo, pre chemo prevention. He was the author of 41 publications at the Institute before it closed in 2004. Conaway was a consultant in environmental toxicology, carcinogenesis, and risk assessment, and was project leader for health risk evaluations on emissions from hazardous waste treatment, storage, and disposal facilities for the EPA. He concluded his career teaching topics related to toxicology at Pace University and at New York Medical College. Um, so I, I obviously accepted uh, on behalf of Dr. Conway, and it was an honor to accept the award on his behalf. And I've heard from a few people that actually knew him. Um, Carl Martin, who was here earlier, was his roommate in college. And he said, it was one thing to have a smart roommate, but it was really something to have Clifford as your roommate. Um, he said, then it got to be really fun when he became president of the college, and he could call on Clifford to come do things. Um, Dave Nichols, has, who many of you may remember as from his time at SC as the academic dean, um, he shared that he and Cliff Conway were lifelong friends. They grew up together here in Winfield. Um, and they also shared musical experiences at a time of intense musical activity in the Winfield schools. Cliff on cello and Dave on the violin. They were in a quartet together at SC. And while Dave intended to be a musician the rest of his life, um, a pursuit that was revised by the tumult, the tumult of the 1960s, he says that Dr. Conaway persistently pursued a scientific career that reflects great honor on his alma mater. And for all his achievements, he remembers Cliff as a humble, honest, caring friend whose values were a credit to Southwestern. I also heard from Cliff's sister, Martise Conaway Cooper, who graduated SC in 1962. She wrote on behalf of herself and her and Cliff's sisters, Carolyn and Jeanette, and Dr. Conaway's two daughters, Christian and Jessica, and both of his grandsons, Ewan and Leon. And her message said, on behalf of Clifford's family, we thank the selection committee for choosing him for this honor. We know that Cliff would have been very pleased to be inducted into Southwestern Science Hall of Fame. We wish that he could have been here and acknowledged the award himself and we are sorry that none of us could attend this evening's ceremony. Clifford was a dedicated alumnus and scientist, and to be so recognized by SC would have meant very much to him. Thank you again. Good evening, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight to introduce uh, Kenneth J. Renner who graduated from uh, Southwestern College in 1976 with degrees in biology and chemistry. From there, he went to Emporia State University and earned a master's degree in zoology. He then went on to complete his doctorate in neuroendocrinology at the University of Kansas. After a couple of postdoctoral positions at Rockefeller, uh, Rockefeller University and the University of Kansas, and after a few years of teaching at the Missouri State University, he was hired as an associate professor of biology at the University of South Dakota in 1994. He has been there to this day. Ken has spent his career in education and research. His research mostly focused on how steroid hormones affect pathways of monoamine neurotransmitters and alter the expression of behaviors. His recent studies have examined the potential roles that organic cation transporters play in mediating rapid changes in monoamine neurotransmitters in response to stress hormone corticosterone. His research raises the possibility that corticosterone blockade of organic cation mediated transport may contribute to rapid actions of stress hormones in the brain and affect behavioral outcomes. Ken has spent considerable time optimizing and applying techniques for analysis of monoamines in his own lab and has generously shared his knowledge with other investigators. Recognized multiple times uh, for his excellence in teaching, Ken continues to be active in science education as a volunteer instructor for the South Dakota Governor's Camp for Middle School Students and Ambassador's Camp for High School Students. No doubt, uh, Ken's professional career surely qualifies him for the Hall of Fame induction. But what was he like? when he was at Southwestern College. 
Ken attended Southwestern College during the first years of Dr. Charlie Hunter's 40-year uh, tenure as a biology professor. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Charlie, uh, Dr. Hunter, couldn't be here tonight because of a birthday party for a grandson. Otherwise, he would be the one introducing Ken this evening. I think Charlie sensed a kindred spirit in Ken. I think in Ken, I think he saw something of himself based on my conversations with him. Uh, so Charlie, along with Ken's brother Steve and college friend Jim Morgan, bestowed upon me a few recollections about Ken Renner, the college aid student, that Charlie felt was imperative that I share with you this evening. So for the record, I am acting on his demands and I am only the messenger. So prior to uh, Southwestern College, prior, prior to his time here at Southwestern College, Ken was an avid specimen collector. So imagine his mom's surprise when a frozen badger toppled upon her when she opened up the freezer one day. And then there was the day when Ken and Steve boiled dead rats from the grain elevator so Ken could reconstruct the skeletons. Steve recalled that being a particularly bad idea. <laughs> At Southwestern College, Ken excelled in most courses, but apparently struggled with Calc 3. For reasons that were not clarified to me, uh, the calculus professor, Dr. Lee Dubowski, liked to rail on Ken for one reason or another. Um, and one day, after some verbal exchange, Dr. Dubowski is remembered to rhetorically ask Ken, what do you know, Mr. Kenner? Ken retorted, well, I know enough to drop calculus. <laughs> it took, it took, several years for Ken to pass Calc 3. The day that Ken drop kicked his physical chemistry book stood out as something worth remembering. I was not filled in on what happened before or after that apparent act of defiance. However, nothing seems to beat the time when Ken was feeding Alvin the alligator some lab rat carcasses and backed into the door, thus shutting it. For a stretch of time, it was just Ken, Alvin, and a couple of birds and no one was able to, uh, able to recall who actually rescued him. So it gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Ken Renner to come before us to accept this honor and perhaps give him the opportunity to explain to us just why he drop kicked his PCAM textbook some 40 years ago. Ken, you want to come up and accept this award? Thank you for that introduction. I think. Uh, so, during my tenure at uh, Southwestern College, you probably gathered from that introduction, there was probably a few potholes in my uh, academic performance. Um, the drop kick in the PCAM, I earned a C in PCAM, and it's actually one of the grades I'm the most proud of, and I do have to thank um, Ivan Freeman for helping me through it. He was a guy that actually understood that stuff. Anyway, um, I still have the book and the back binding is broken. <laughs> so when I came to Southwestern College, I really didn't know what I was gonna major in. And the reason that I majored in biology was predominantly to get my dad off my back. And he said he wanted me to be a math or an pre-engineering major, and I think the comments about Dr. Dubowski suggested that would have been a poor career choice. And he was devastated when I started studying biology until my brother came here and started studying English and what could be worse. So anyway, <laughs> that took the heat off. I had a number of professors and uh, faculty members that had helped shape my uh, academic career and helped me mature as a student, which I needed. And uh, in particular, I'd like to mention four individuals, uh, Mr. Colling and then the members of the biology department at the time, uh, Max Thompson, uh, Charlie Hunter, and Dr. Wimmer, Doc. And uh, uh, all of them had some contribution that, that really helped me out. In the case of Mr. Colling, uh, I didn't appreciate how good a chemistry instructor he was until some time after I left this institution. And the second thing that I discovered uh, from him was that he used to sit there and he had a stopwatch and he put that out and open it up and then he always had his top button buttoned and he would stand there and he would lecture 
and he would crack jokes in the lecture, but he would never change expression. <laughs> so I picked that up, and in my lectures today, I do the same thing, because there's nothing worse than telling a joke and having everybody stare at you. And I assume that that's why he did that. Um, in the case of uh, Doc Wimmer, uh, my favorite course was mammalogy, but I probably should have paid a little bit of attention to comparative anatomy. I took that when I was a sophomore. I believe I earned a C, uh, honestly earned. And uh, the problem with comparative anatomy, uh, did I say physiology? I meant anatomy. The problem with comparative anatomy was that these specimens were fixed in formaldehyde or something or other. I didn't like the smell of it. And so what I did was I took my cat and my shark, and there might have been something else, and I put them in my cross-country bag. And I hung them outside of my window in my dormitory, and I dry labbed it. My grades reflected that. <laughs> and when I, years later, 20 years later, went out to the university, oh, after I, after I did that at the end of the semester, uh, unlike my PCAM book, I poured gas on them and burned them. But <laughs> I went to the University of South Dakota and I sold myself as a guy that could teach anything. Uh, you know, you want me to teach it, I'll teach it. And my first teaching assignment was comparative anatomy. <laughs> I've been dissecting cats and sharks for the last 20 years, so I believe there is karma there. And Max Thompson's botany course was probably the first biology course I was actually successful in. And he asked me to be an undergraduate teaching assistant in the botany lab, and I discovered that I really enjoyed that. And that probably got me to thinking a little bit about the potential of teaching as a, as a profession. And then finally, there was uh, Dr. Hunter. And I took comparative physiology from him. And that course really got me excited, because physiology is really the study of how things work. And it incorporates chemistry, biology, and physics. And he also introduced me to the potential of doing research. And we had this project with uh, Cancer Magister, the Dungeness Crab, I don't remember the details of the project, except that it was a dismal failure and that that was um, my fault. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but I started getting interested in, the, in that type of thing. And so when I finished up my, my schooling here, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. And so Dr. Hunter and Dr. Wimmer encouraged me to take the GREs and to consider going to graduate school. And Surprise, I did okay on the GREs, and I applied to Emporia State because uh, Dr. Wimmer thought that would be a good place for me to mature further and get a little more involved in research, and he was spot on. It wound up being a, a really good experience, and I never left academia from that point. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Bob Gallup. Uh, my primary job here at Southwestern is teaching physics, making their lives miserable. There are a number of students in this room who can vouch for that particular part of my uh, expertise. Um, but it's my distinct pleasure tonight uh, to introduce to you our next inductee, Angela Mayorga May. Now, when she was selected to uh, be inducted this year, the question went around the science faculty. Hey, was anyone around when she was a student here? And looking, looking, looking. Yeah, me. Mm -hmm. Turns out, just me. And so I'm honored to be able to make this introduction. In fact, Angela and I arrived at Southwestern the very same year, 1993. For those of you trying to do the math in your head right now, that's 25 years ago. Okay. Long, long time ago. So what I'm going to do is read through the formal part of her introduction, and then I'm going to give some more informal thoughts. <laughs> All right, here's the formal part of um, her notation. Angela graduated from Southwestern in 1997. Then she went on to Creighton University, where she received her MD degree, and then she completed a residency training at, in the Combined Internal Medicine Psychiatry Program at the University of Kansas. I've actually been meaning to ask you, did you go into psychiatry to get a better idea of what exactly was wrong with the science faculty here? Was that, some, was that part of the motivation behind it? It's, it's been a question. While in her residency program at KU, she was selected to be one of the four chief residents in internal medicine while also holding a joint appointment in the Department of Psychiatry. 
When she graduated from the residency program, she was selected to be the, to be the recipient of the Sean Storm Memorial Award. This award is presented to a graduating psychiatry resident who consistently demonstrates excellence in all aspects of patient-centered care. She then joined the uh, psychiatry faculty at the University of Kansas Medical Center in 2007 and currently holds a joint appointment as assistant professor of psychiatry and internal medicine at KU Medical Center. She also functions as the director of the psychiatry residency program. Her principal duties as residency director are educating residents, staffing the outpatient clinic, and working as a psychiatric consultant to the solid organ transplant service. That's the formal part of her introduction. Now the informal part. Not only was I at SC when Angela was here, um, she was also a student in one of my classes. She, was, she took uh, my Calculus One class in the fall of 1996. You're probably not going to be shocked to learn that she was an excellent student. Even though she was involved, as we've kind of reminisced here tonight, in theater, in every choir that existed on this campus, she was, she was the prototypical Southwestern student being involved in very many things and yet being an excellent student. In fact, I went back and I actually checked my calculus records. I taught calculus here for 16 years. Angela had the second highest score on the Calc 1 final in that entire time. Right? See? Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. There you, there you go. Now, uh, Angela's academic abilities were only one reason that she was a delight to have around, and she really was. It was fun just going into class and seeing her. Anyone who knows her knows that she has a sparkling and relentlessly positive disposition, and that's one of the nicest things about her. My personal favorite part of her personality, though, and this is by far my favorite part, is her laugh. Anybody who has spent much time with her knows that part of her. Um, over the last few days, I've been thinking about how could I characterize Angela's laugh? And I've thought about it, I thought about it, and I basically came down to unbridled joy. I mean, it's, and that, honestly, there were times when she was a student here where I would try just to say something funny to her <laughs> just to get her to laugh because it made me so happy. And so I hate to say that I used you that way, but <laughs> I, I really did. And so, Angela, it's with great pleasure that we both welcome you back to Southwestern and induct you into the Natural Science Hall of Fame. Congratulations. <clears throat> Oh, goodness. Thank you. Um, my time at Southwestern was my most favorite time. I wouldn't change it for anything, but I almost didn't come here. Um, I'm originally from Texas. My, my dream was always to go to Baylor. Um, I was accepted at Baylor. Everything was set. I went to visit Baylor with, with my mom, and it was really big <laughs> and really far away. And this guy named Doc Wimmer had been calling and calling and calling and calling. And I thought, God, maybe I should call him back now since Baylor's not really working out for me. And um, came to visit Southwestern and fell in love immediately. Um, I um, spent um, a lot of time in, in Mossman and had 8 o'clock um, classes every semester I was here. Took all my labs at 7.25 in the morning because I spent every afternoon in the theater, was involved in every play or musical that um, went on while I was here in one way or another, sang in choirs, um, still have my best friends and best memories from Southwestern. Um, I, when I was accepted to medical school, I got a letter in the mail, and I remember I was, I was in Reed, I was all by myself, and I, and I opened this letter, and I realized I was accepted, and I called my dad, not in his office, called my mom, not in her office, all of my friends were in class, and I ran down to Mossman, and Charlie Hunter was there, and I said, oh my gosh, guess what? I was accepted, and he was, gave me a great big hug. He was so excited for me, and um, um, it was, I, I always knew that that was what I wanted to do. Um, in fifth grade, some Army nurses came to speak to us to tell us about being in healthcare, and, and, and I thought, wow, that sounds great. 
But many of you who know me know that I don't really love to take orders. I really prefer to give them. So I thought, well, I can't be a nurse. I have to be a doctor. And so that, that was my plan. Southwestern helped me um, get there. Um, I really um, enjoy what I do. I love being able to come back to Southwestern and see um, faculty who were here and um, talked with talk with my friends and love all the growth and wonderful things that are going on at Southwestern and I really appreciate you honoring me with this award. Thank you. Congratulations to Clifford who's not here, to Ken, to Angela. Um, in closing, I would like to truly thank each and every one of you for your attendance, your attention and your participation tonight. It has been a pleasure to spend the evening celebrating the outstanding achievements of our selected alumni with you. Um, I would also like to, per I would like to personally congratulate each of the inductees and their families, because their families are important too. Dr. Conaway, Dr. Renner, Dr. Mayor Gamay. Are you guys proud of her? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would also personally like to say thank you to each of you for your dedication and the hard work that you put into your career. That hard work and dedication that resulted in your being honored here tonight. Thank you for being an inspiration to our current and future students. You may not be aware of the silent witness that you bear to our students of all the possibilities that exist for them out there, but you do, and I appreciate your assistance in that task. Um, again, our, seer, our sincere appreciation for your attendance this evening, and congratulations to the 2018 Hall of Fame inductees. Go Builders! <laughs>